And in the seventh year, Yaakov's service, which he served Laban, was completed. And Yaakov said to Laban, Give me my woman, for the days of my service are fulfilled. And Laban did so. And Laban and Yaakov assembled all the people of that place, and they made a feast. And in the evening, Laban came to the house, and afterward, Yaakov came there with the people of the feast, and Laban extinguished all the lights that were there in the house. And Yaakov said to Laban, Wherefore do you do this thing to us? And Laban answered, such is our custom to act in this land. And afterward, Laban took his daughter Leah, and he brought her to Yaakov, and he came to her, and Yaakov did not know that she was Leah. And Laban gave his daughter Leah, his maid Zilpah, for a handmaid. And all the people at the feast knew that Laban had done to Yaakov, but they did not tell the thing to Yaakov. And all the neighbors came that night to Yaakov's house, and they ate and drank and rejoiced and played before Leah upon the timbrels with the dances, and they responded before Yaakov, Hilea, Hilea, and Yaakov heard their words but did not understand their meaning, but he thought such might be their custom in the land. And the neighbors spoke these words before Yaakov during the night, and all the lights that were in the house of Laban had that night extinguished. And in the morning, when daylight appeared, Yaakov turned to his woman, and he saw, and behold, it was Leah that had been lying in his bosom. And Yaakov said, Behold, now I know what the neighbors said last night. Hela, they said. I know it not. And Yaakov called unto Laban and said unto him, What is this you did to me? Surely I served you for Rachel, and why did you deceive me and did give me Leah? And Laban answered Yaakov, saying, Not so is it done in our place to give the younger before the elder. Now, therefore, if you desire to take her sister likewise, Take her unto you for the service which you will serve me for another seven years. And Yaakov did so. And he also took Rachel for a woman, and he served Laban seven years more. And Yaakov also came to Rachel, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And Laban gave her his maid, Bilhah, for a handmaid. And when Yahuwah saw that Leah was hated, Yahuwah opened her womb, and she conceived and bore Yaakov for sons in those days. And these are their names, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yahuda, and she afterward left bearing. And at that time, Rachel was barren, and she had no offspring. And Rachel envied her sister Leah. And when Rachel saw that she bore no children to Yaakov, she took her handmaid Bilhah, and she bore Yaakov two sons, Dan and Naphtali. And when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she also took her handmaid Zilpah, and she gave her to Yaakov for a woman. And Yaakov also came to Zilpah, and she also bore Yaakov two sons, Gad and Asher. And Leah again conceived and bore Yaakov in those days two sons and one daughter. And these are the names, Yeshakar, Yevulun, and their sister Dinah. And Rachel was still barren in those days. And Rachel prayed to Yahuwah at that time. And she said, O oh, Yahuwah Elohim, remember me and visit me, I beseech you. For now my man will cast me off for I have borne him no children. Now, O Yahuwah Elohim, hear my supplication before you, and see my affliction, and give me children like one of the handmaids, that I may be more bare my reproach. And Elohim heard her, and opened her womb, and Rachel conceived and bore a son. And she said, Yahuwah has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Yosef, saying, May Yahuwah add to me another son. And Yaakov was 91 years old when she bore him. 
At that time, Yaakov's mother, Rivka, sent her nurse, Deborah, the daughter of Utz, and two of Yitzchak's servants to Yaakov. And they came to Yaakov, to Haran, and they said to him, Rivka has sent us to you that you shall return to your father's house to the land of Kenyan. And Yaakov hearkened unto them in this which his mother had spoken. At that time, the other seven years which Yaakov served for Laban for Rachel were completed, and it was at that end of fourteen years that he had dwelt in Haran that Yaakov said to Laban, Give me my woman and send me away that I may go to my land, for behold, my mother did send unto me from the land of Kenyan that I should return to my father's house. And Laban said to him, Not so, I pray you. If I have found favor in your sight, do not leave me. Appoint me your wages, and I will give them and remain with me. And Yaakov said unto him, This is what you shall give me for wages, that I shall this day pass through all your flocks and take away from them every lamb that is speckled and spotted, and such are brown amongst the sheep and amongst the goats. And if you will do this thing for me, I will return and feed your flock and keep them as at first. And Lavan did so, and Lavan removed from his flock all that Yaakov had said and gave them to him. And Yaakov placed all that he had removed from Lavan's flock in the hands of his sons, and Yaakov was feeding the remainder of Lavan's flock. And when the servants of ya Yitchkov, which he had sent unto Yaakov, saw that Yaakov would not then return with them to the land of Kenyan to his father. They then went away from him, and they returned home to the land of Kenyan. And Deborah remained with Yaakov in Haran, and she did not return with the servants of Yitzchak to the land of Kenyan. And Deborah resided with Yaakov's woman and children in Haran. And Yaakov served Laban six years longer, and when the sheep brought forth, Yaakov removed them from such were speckled and spotted, as he had determined with Laban, and Yaakov did so at Laban's for six years, and the man increased abundantly, and he had cattle and maidservants and men servants, camels and asses. And Yaakov had two hundred drove of cattle, and his cattle were of large size and of beautiful appearance and were very productive. And all the families of the sons of men desired to get some of the cattle of Yaakov, for they were exceedingly prosperous. And many of the sons of men came to procure some of Yaakov's flock. And Yaakov gave them a sheep for a man servant or a maid servant for an ass or a camel or whatsoever Yaakov desired from them, they gave them. And Yaakov obtained riches and honor and possession by means of these transactions with the sons of men, and the children of Laban envied him of his honor. And in the course of time, he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Yaakov has taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's has he acquired all his glory. And Yaakov beheld the countenance of Laban and of his children, and behold, it was not toward him in those days as he had been before. And Yaakov appeared, and Yahuwah appeared to Yaakov in the expiration of six years, and he said to him, Arise, go forth out of this land, and return to the land of your birthplace, and I will be with you. And Yaakov rose up at that time, and he mounted his children and women and all belongings to him upon camels, and he went forth to go to the land of Kenyan to his father Yitzchak. And Laban did not know that Yaakov had gone from him, for Laban had been that day sleepy sheep shearing. And Rachel stole her father's images, and she took them, and she concealed them upon the camel upon which she sat, and she went on. And this is the manner of the images in taking a man who is the firstborn and slaying him, and taking the hair off his head, and taking salt, 
and salting the head and anointing it in oil, and then taking a small tablet of copper or a tablet of gold and writing the name upon it, and placing the tablet under his tongue, and taking the head with the tablet under the tongue and putting it in the house, and lighting up lights before it and bowing down to it. And at the time when they bow down to it, it speaks to them in all manners that they ask of it through the power of the name which is written in it. And some make them in it the figures of men of gold and silver and go to them in times known to them and to the figures receive the influence of the stars and tell them future things. And in this manner were the images which Rachel stole from her father. And Rachel stole these images, which were her father's, in order that Levan might not know through them where Yaakov had gone. And Levan came home, and he asked concerning Yaakov and his household, and he was not to be found. And Levan sought his images to know where Yaakov had gone, and could not find them. And he went to some other images, and he inquired of them, and they told him that Yahakov had fled from him to his fathers, to the land of Kenyan. And Levan then rose up, and he took his brothers and all the servants, and he went forth and pursued Yaakov, and he overtook him in Mount Gilad. And Levan said unto Yaakov, What is this you have done to me? to flee and deceive me and lead my daughters and my children as captive taken by the sword. And you did not suffer me to kiss them and send them away with joy. And you did steal my Elohim and did go away. And Yaakov answered Levan saying, because I was afraid least you would take your daughters by force from me. And now with whomever you find your Elohim, he shall die. And Levan searched for images, and he examined in all Yaakov's tents and furniture, but could not find them. And Levan said to Yaakov, We will cut a covenant together, and it shall be a testimony between me and you. If you shall afflict my daughters, or shall take other women beside my daughters, even Elohim shall be a witness between me and you in this manner. And they took stones and made a heap, and Levan said, This heap is a witness between me and you. Therefore he called the name of Gilad. And Yaakov and Levan suffered sacrifice upon the mount, and they ate there by the heap, and they tarried in the mount all night. And Levan rose up early in the morning, and he wept with his daughters and kissed them, and he returned to his place. And he hastened and sent off his son, Beor, who was 17 years old, with Avikoroth, the son of Uz, the son of Nechor, and with them were ten men. And they hastened and went and passed on the road before Yaakov. And they came by another road to the land of Seir. And they came to Esau and said unto him, Thus says your brother and relative, your mother's brother Laban, the son of Bethuel, saying, Have you heard what Yaakov, your brother, has done unto me, who first came to me naked and bare? And I went to meet him and brought him to my house with honor, and I made him great, and I gave him my two daughters for women, and also two of my maids, and Elohim blessed him on my account, and he increased abundantly, and had sons, daughters, and maidservants. He also an immense stock of flocks and herds, camels, asses, also silver and gold in abundance. And when he saw that his wealth increased, he left me while I went to shear my sheep, and he rose up and fled in secrecy. And he lifted his woman and children, and he, upon camels, and he led away all his cattle and property which he acquired in my land. And he lifted up his countenance to go to his father Yitzchak to the land of Kenyan. And he did not suffer me to kiss my daughter and my children, and he led my daughters captive, taken by the sword. And he also stole my Elohim, and he fled. And now I have left him in the mountain of the brook of Yabok. Him and all belongings to him, he lacks nothing. 
If it be your wish to go to him, then go, and there will you find him, and you can do unto him as your soul desires. And Laban's messengers came and told Esau all these things. And Esau heard all words of Laban's messengers, and his anger was greatly kindled against Yaakov, and he remembered his hatred, and his anger burned within him. And Esau hastened and took his children and servants and souls of his household, being sixty men. And he went and assembled all the children of Seyar, the Cori, and their people, being three hundred and forty men, and took all his number of four hundred men and drawn swords. And he went to Yaakov to smite him. And Esau divided this number into several parts. And he took the sixty men of his children and servants and the souls of his household as one head and gave them care of Eliphaz, his eldest son. And the remaining heads he gave to care of the six sons of Seir, the Chori. And he placed every man over his generations and children. And the whole of the camp went as it was, and Esau went amongst them toward Yaakov, and he conducted them with speed. And Laban's messenger departed from Esau and went to the land of Kenian, and they came to the house of Rivkah, the mother of Yaakov and Esau. And they told her, saying, Behold, your son Esau has gone against his brother Yaakov with four hundred men, for he heard that he was coming, and he is gone to make war with him, and to smite him, and to take all that he has. And Rivka hastened and sent seventy-two men from the servants of Yiskah to meet Yaakov on the road. For she said, Perchance Esau may make war in the road when he meets him. And these messengers went on the road to meet Yaakov, and they met him in the road of the brook on the opposite side of the brook, Yabok. And Yaakov said when he saw them, This camp is destined to me from Elohim. And Yaakov called the name of the place Machnavim. And Yaakov knew all his father's people, and he kissed them and embraced them and came with them. And Yaakov asked them concerning his father and mother, and they said, They were well. And these measures said unto Yaakov, Rivka, your mother, has sent us to you, saying, I have heard, my son, that your brother Esau has gone forth against you on the road with men from the children of Seyar, the Kori, and Therefore, my son, hearken to my voice and see with your counsel what you will do. And when he comes up to you, supplicate him and do not speak rashly to him and give him a present from what you possess and from what Elohim has favored you with. And when he asks you concerning your affairs, conceal nothing from him. Perhaps he may turn from his anger against you and you will thereby save your soul you and all belonging to you, for it is your duty to honor him, for he is your elder brother. And when Yaakov heard the words of his mother, which the messenger had spoken of him, Yaakov lifted up his voice and wept bitterly, and did as his mother then commanded him. And at that time Yaakov sent messengers to his brother Esau towards the land of Seir, and he spoke to him words of supplication, and he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye say to my lord, to Esau, Thus says your servant Yaakov, Let not my lord imagine that my father's blessing with which he did bless me has proved beneficial to me. For I have been these twenty years with Levan, and he deceived me and changed my wages ten times, as it has all been already told unto my Lord. And I served him in his house very laboriously, and Elohim afterwards saw my affliction, my labor, and the works of my hands, and he caused me to find grace and favor in his sight. And I afterward, through Elohim's great mercy and kindness, acquired oxen and asses and cattle and men servants and maid servants. And now I am coming to the land and my home to my father and mother who are in the land of Kenyan. And I have sent to let my Lord know all this in order to find favor in the sight of my Lord. 
so that he may not imagine that I have of myself obtained wealth or that he or that the blessing with which my father blessed me has benefited me. And those messengers went to Esau and found him on the borders of the land of Edom, going toward Jaakob, and four hundred men of the children of Seyar, the Chori, were standing with drawn swords. And the measures of Jaakob, and the messengers of Jaakob told Esau all these words that Jaakob had spoken to them concerning Esau. And Esau answered them with pride and contempt and said to them, Surely I have heard, and truly it has been told unto me what Yaakov has done to Levan, who exalted him in his house and gave him his daughters for women, and he begat sons and daughters and abundantly e increased in wealth and riches in Levan's house through his means. And when he saw that his wealth was abundant and his riches great, he fled with all belongings to him from Levan's house, and he led Levan's daughters away from the face of their father as captives taken by the sword without telling him of it. And not only to Levan has Yaakov done this, but also unto me has he done so and has twice supplanted me, and I shall be silent. Now, therefore, I have this day come with my camps to meet him, and I will do unto him according to the desire of my heart. And the messengers returned and came to Yaakov and said to him, We came to your brother, to Esau, and we told him all your words, and thus he has answered us, and behold, he comes to meet you with four hundred men. Now then, know and see what you shall do, and pray before Elohim to deliver you from him. And when he heard the words of his brother, which he had spoken to the messengers of Yaakov, Yaakov was greatly afraid and he was distressed. And Yaakov prayed to Yahuwah Eloheinu, and he said, O Yahuwah Elohim of my fathers, Avram and Yitzchak, you did say unto me when I went away from my father's house, saying, I am Yahuwah Elohim of your father Abraham. And the Elohim of Yitzchak, unto you do I give this land and your seed after you. And I will make your seed as the stars of heaven. And you shall spread forth to the four sides of heaven. And in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And you did establish your words. And you did give unto me riches and children and cattle. As the utmost wishes of my heart did you give unto your servant. You did give unto me all that I asked from you, so that I lack nothing. And you did afterwards say unto me, Return to your parents and to your birthplace, and I will, st I will still do with well for you. And now that I have come, and you did deliver me from Laban, I shall fall in the hands of Esau, who will slay me, yea, together with mothers of my children. Now, therefore, O Yahuwah Elohim, deliver me, I pray you, also from the hands of my brother Esau, for I am greatly afraid of him. And if there is no righteousness in me, do it for the sake of Abraham and my father Yitzchak. For I know that through kindness and mercy have I acquired this wealth. Now, therefore, I beseech you to deliver me this day with your kindness and to answer me. And Yaakov ceased praying to Yahuwah, and he divided the people that were with him with the flocks and cattle into two camps, and he gave the half of the care of Damasek, the son of Eleazar, Abraham's servant, for a camp with his children, and the other half he gave to care of his brother, Elianuk, the son of Eleazar, to be for a camp with his children. And he commanded them, saying, Keep yourselves at a distance with your camps and do not come too near each other. And if Esau come to one camp and slay it, the other camp at a distance from it will escape him. Yaakov tarried there that night, and during the whole night he gave his servant instructions concerning the forces and his children. And Yahuwah heard the prayer of Yaakov on that day. And Yahuwah then delivered Yaakov from the hands of his brother Esau. And Yaakov sent three angels 
of the angels of heaven, and they went before Esau and came to him. And these angels appeared to Esau and his people as two thousand men riding upon horses furnished with all sorts of war instruments. And they appeared in the sight of Esau and all his men to be divided into four camps with four chiefs to them. And one camp went on and they found Esau coming with four hundred men towards his brother Yaakov. And this camp ran towards Esau and his people, and terrified them, and Esau fell off the horse in alarm, and all his men separated from him in that place, for they were greatly afraid. And the whole of the camp shouted after them when they fled from Esau, and all the warlike men answered, saying, Surely we are the servants of Yaakov, who is the servant of Elohim, and who then can stand against him? And Esau said unto them, O oh, then, my lord and brother, Yaakov is your lord, whom I have not seen for these twenty years. And now that I have this day come to see him, do you treat me in this manner? And the angels answered him, saying, As Yahweh lives, were not Yaakov of whom you speak, your brother? We had not let one remaining from you and your people, but only on account of Yaakov, we will do nothing to them. And this camp passed from Esau and his men, and it went away. And Esau and his men had gone from them about a league when the second camp came towards him with all sorts of weapons. And they also did unto Esau and his men as the first camp had done to them. And when they had left it to go on, behold, the third camp came towards him, and they were all terrified, and Esau fell off the horse, and the whole camp cried out, and said, Surely we are the servants of Yaakov, who is this servant of Elohim, and who can stand against us? And Esau again answered them, saying, O oh, then, Yaakov my lord, and your lord is my brother, and for twenty years I have not seen his countenance, and hearing this day that he was coming, I went this day to meet him, and do you treat me in this manner? And they answered him and said unto him, As Yahuwah lives, were not Yaakov your brother, as you did say, we had not left a remnant from you and your men. But on account of Yaakov, of whom you speak, being your brother, we will not meddle with you or your men. And the third camp also passed from them, and he still continued his road with the men towards Yaakov, when the fourth camp came towards him, and they also did unto him and his men as the others had done. And when Esau beheld the evil which the four angels had done to him, and to his men, he became greatly afraid of his brother Yahakov, and he went to meet him in peace. And Esau concealed his hatred against Yahakov because he was afraid of his life on account of his brother Yahakov, and because he imagined that the four camps that he had lightened upon were Yahakov's servants. And Yahakov tarried that night with his servants in their camp. And he resolved with his servants to give unto Esau a present from all that he had with him and from all his property. And Yaakov rose up in the morning, he and his men, and they chose from among the cattle a present. And this is the amount of Esau. And he selected 240 head from the flocks, and he selected from the camels and asses 30 each. And of the herds he chose 50 kine, and then put them all in 10 droves, and he placed each sort by itself, and he delivered them into the hands of 10 of his servants, each drove by itself. And he commanded them and said unto them, Keep yourselves at a distance from each other and put a space between the droves. And when Esau and those who are with him shall meet you and ask you, saying, Whose are you, and whither do you go, and to whom belongs all this before you? You shall say unto him, We are the servants of Yaakov, and we come to meet Esau in peace, and behold, Yaakov comes behind us. And that which is before us is a present sent to Yaakov, to his brother Esau. 
And if they shall say unto you, Why does he delay behind you from coming to meet his brother and to see his face? Then you shall say unto them, Surely he comes joyfully behind us to meet his brother. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes to him. And after this, I will see his face, perchance he will accept of me. So the whole present passed on in the hands of his servants and went before him on that day. And he lodged that night with his camps by the border of the brook of Yabag. And he rose up in the midst of the night and he took his women and his maidservant and all belonging to him. And he that night passed them over the ford Yabak. And when he passed all belonging to him over the brook, Yaakov was left by himself, and a man met him, and he wrestled with him that night until the breaking of day, and the hollow of Yaakov's thigh was out of joint through wrestling with him. And at the break of day, the man left Yaakov there, and he blessed him and went away, and Yaakov passed the brook at the break of day, and he halted upon his thigh. And the sun rose upon him when he had passed the brook, and he came up to the place of his cattle and children. And they went on till midday, and while they were going, the present was passing on before them. And Yaakov lifted up his eyes, and looked, and beheld Esau was at a distance, coming along with many men, about four hundred. And Yaakov was greatly afraid of his brother, and Yaakov hastened and divided his children unto his women and his handmaids and his daughter Dinah. He put in a chest and delivered her into the hands of his servants, and he passed before his children and the women to meet his brother, and he bowed down to the ground, yea, he bowed down seven times until he approached his brother, and Elohim caused Yaakov to find grace and favor in the sight of Esau and his men, for Elohim had heard the prayer of Yaakov. And the fear of Yaakov and his terror fell upon his brother Esau, for Esau was greatly afraid of Yaakov for what the angels of Elohim had done to Esau. And Esau's anger against Yaakov was turning into kindness. And when Esau saw Yaakov running towards him, he also ran towards him, and he embraced him, and he fell upon his neck, and they kissed, and they wept. And Elohim put fear and kindness towards Yaakov in the hearts of the men that came with Esau. And they also kissed Yaakov and embraced him. And also Eliphaz, the son of Esau, with their four brothers, sons of Esau wept with Yaakov, and they kissed him and embraced him, for the fear of Yaakov had fallen upon them. And Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women with their offspring, the children of Yaakov, walking behind Yaakov and bowing along the road to Esau. And Esau said to Yaakov, Who are these with you, my brother? Are they your children or your servants? And Yaakov answered Esau and said, They are my children which Elohim has graciously, graciously given to your servant. And while Yaakov was speaking to Esau and his men, Esau beheld the whole camp. And he said to Yaakov, Whence did you get the whole of the camp that I met yesternight? And Yaakov said, To find favor in the sight of my Lord, it is that which Elohim graciously gave your servant. And the present came before Esau, and Yaakov pressed Esau, saying, Take, I pray you, the present that I have brought to my Lord. And Esau said, Wherefore is this my purpose? Keeping that which you have unto yourself. And Yaakov said, It is incumbent upon me to give all of this, since I have seen your face, that you still live in peace. And Esau refused to take the present. And Yaakov said unto him, I beseech you, my Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, then receive my present at my hand, for I have therefore seen your face as though I had seen an Elohim-like face, because you were pleased with me. And Esau took the present, and Yaakov also gave unto Esau silver and gold, and Bedalium 
for he pressed him so much that he took them. And Esau divided the cattle that were in the camp, and he gave the half to the men who had come with him, for they had come on hire, and the other half he delivered into the hands of his children. And the silver and gold and bedellium he gave in the hands of Eliphaz, his eldest son, and Esau said unto Yaakov, let us remain with you, and we will go slowly along with you until you come to my place with me, that we may dwell there together. And Yaakov answered his brother and said, I would do as my Lord speaks unto me, but my Lord knows that the children are tender in the flocks and herds with their young who are with me, but go but slowly, for if they went swiftly, they would all die, for you know their burdens and their fatigue. Therefore, let my Lord pass on before his servant, and I will go on slowly for the sake of our children and flock until I come to my Lord's place in Sayar. And Esau said to Yaakov, I will place with you some of the people that are with me to take care of you on the road and to bear your fatigue and burden. And he said, What needs it, my Lord, if I may find grace in your sight? Behold, I will come unto Sayar, to dwell there together as you have spoken. Go ye then with your people, for I will follow you. And Yaakov said this to Esau in order to remove Esau and his men from him, so that Yaakov might afterward go to his father's house to the land of Kenyan. And Esau hearkened to the voice of Yaakov, and Esau returned with four hundred men that were with him on their road to Sayar. Yaakov and all belonging to him went that day as far as the extremity of the land of Kenyan in its borders, and he remained there some time. And in some time after, Yaakov went away from the borders of the land, and he came to the land of Shalem. That is the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Kenyan, and he rested in front of the city. And he bought a parcel of the field which was there from the children of Hamar, the land, the people of the land, for five shekels. And Yaakov there built himself a house, and he pitched his tent there, and he made Sakoth for his cattle. Therefore he called the name of the place Sakus, and Yaakov remained in Sakus a year and six months. At that time, some of the women of the inhabitants of the land went to the city of Shechem to dance and rejoice with the daughters of the people of the city. And when they went forth, then Rachel and Leah, the women of Yaakov with their families also went to behold the rejoicing of the daughters of the city. And Dinah, the daughter of Yaakov, also went along with them and the, saw the daughters of the city and they remained there before these daughters while all the people of the city were standing by them to behold their rejoicings. And all the great people of the city were there. And Shechem, the son of Kamar, the prince of the land, was also standing there to see them. And Shechem beheld Dinah, the daughter of Yaakov, sitting with her mother before the daughters of the city. And the damsel pleased him greatly. And he there asked his friends and his people, saying, Whose daughter is that sitting amongst the women, whom I do not know in this city? And they said to him, Surely this is the daughter of Yaakov, the son of Yiskaf, the Evere, who has dwelt in the city for some time. And when it was reported that the daughters of the land were going forth to rejoice, she went with her mother and maidservants to sit amongst them, as you see. And Shechem beheld Dinah, the daughter of Yaakov. And when he looked at her, his soul became vexed upon Dinah. And he sent and had her taken by force. And Dinah came to the house of Shechem, and he seized her forcibly and lay with her and humbled her. And he loved her exceedingly and placed her in his house. And they came and told the thing unto Yaakov. And when Yaakov heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah, Yaakov sent twelve of his servants to fetch Dinah from the house of Shechem. And they went and came to the house of Shechem to take away Dinah from there. 
And when they came, Shechem went out to them with his men and drove them from his house. And he would not suffer them to come before Dinah. But Shechem was sitting with Dinah, kissing and embracing her before their eyes. And the servants of Yaakov came back and told him, saying, When we came, he and his men drove us away. And thus did Shechem do to Dinah before our eyes. And Yaakov knew moreover that Shechem had defiled his daughter, but he said nothing, and his sons were feeding his cattle in the field, and Yaakov remained silent till their return. And before his sons came home, Yaakov sent two maidens from his servants, daughters, to take care of Dinah in the house of Shechem and to remain with her. And Shechem sent three of his friends to his father's Kamar, the son of Hedikam and the son of Parad, saying, Get me this damsel for a woman. And Kamar, the son of Kedidkim, the Kevi, came to the house of Shechem, his son, and he sat before him. And Kamar said unto his son, Shechem, Is there then no woman amongst the daughters of your people that you will take and every woman who is not of your people? And Shechem said to him, Her her only must you get for me, for she is delightful in my sight. And Kamar did according to the word of his son, for he was greatly beloved by him. And Kamar went forth to Yaakov to commune with him concerning this matter. And when he had gone from the house of his son Shechem before, he came to Yaakov to speak unto him. Behold, the sons of Yaakov had come from the field as soon as they heard the thing that Shechem, the son of Kamar, had done. And the men were very much grieved concerning their sister. And they all came home, fired with anger before the time of gathering in their cattle. And they came and sat before their father, and they spoke unto him, kindled with wrath, saying, Surely death is due this man. And to his household, because Yahuwah Elohim of the whole earth commanded Noah and his children that man shall never rob nor break wedlock. Now be behold, Shechem has both ravaged and committed fornication with our sister, and not one of all the people of this city spoke a word to him. Surely you know and understand that the judgment of death is due to Shechem and to his father and to the whole city on account of the thing which he has done. And while they were speaking before their father in this manner, behold, Kamor, the father of Shechem, came to speak to Yaakov the words of his son concerning Dinah. And he sat before Yaakov and before his sons. And Kamor spoke unto them, saying, the soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. I pray you give her unto him for a woman and intermarry with us. Give us your daughters and we will give you our daughters and you shall dwell with us in our land and we will be as one people in the land. For our land is very extensive. So dwell ye and trade therein and get possessions in it and do therein as you desire, and no one shall prevent you by saying a word to you. And Chamar ceased speaking unto Yaakov and his sons, and behold, Shechem his son had come after him, and he sat before them. And Shechem spoke before Yaakov and his sons, saying, May I find favor in your sight that you will give me your daughter, and whatsoever you say unto me that I do for her. Ask me for abundance of dowry and gift, and I will give it. And whatsoever you shall say unto me, that will I do. And whatsoever he be that will rebel against your orders, he shall die. Only give me the damsel for a woman. And Shemon the Levi answered, Hamor and Shechem, his son deceitfully saying all you have spoken unto us we will do for you and behold your sister is in your house but keep away from her until we send to our father Yitzchak concerning this matter for we can do nothing without his consent for he knows the ways of our father Abraham and whatsoever he says unto us we tell you we will conceal nothing from you and Shimon Thus Levi spoke this unto Shechem, 
and his father in order to find a pretext and to seek counsel what was to be done to Shechem and to his city in this manner. And when Shechem and his father heard the words of Simon and Levi, it seemed good in their sight, and Shechem and his father came forth to go home. And when they had gone, the sons of Yaakov said unto the father, saying, Behold, we know that death is due to these wicked ones and to their city, because they transgress that which Elohim had commanded unto Noah and his children and his seed after them. And also because Shechem did this thing to our sister, Dinah, in defiling her for such vileness, shall never be done amongst us. Now, therefore, know and see what you will do, and seek counsel and pretext what is to be done to them in order to kill all of the inhabitants of the city. And Shimon said to them, Here is a proper advice for you. Tell them, to circumcise every male amongst them as we are circumcised. And if they do not wish to do this, we shall take our daughter from them and go away. And if they consent to do this and will do it, then when they are sunk down with pain, we will attack them with our swords as upon one who is quiet and peaceable, and we will slay every male person amongst them. And Shimon's advice pleased them. And Shimon and Levi resolved to do unto them as it was purposed. And on the next morning, Shechem and Kamar, his father, came again unto Yaakov and his sons to speak concerning Dinah and to hear what answer the sons of Yaakov would give to their words. And the sons of Yaakov spoke deceitfully to them, saying, we told our father Yitzchak all your words, and your words pleased him. But he spoke unto us, saying, Thus did Abraham his father command him from Elohim, Yahuwah, of the whole earth, that if any man who is not of his descendants that should wish to take one of his daughters shall cause every male belonging to him to be circumcised, as we are circumcised, and then we may give them our daughter for a woman. Now we have made known to you all our ways that our father spoke unto us. For we cannot do this of which you spoke unto us to give our daughters to an uncircumcised man, for it is a disgrace to us. But herein we will consent to you to give your daughter, and we will also take unto ourselves your daughters, and will dwell amongst you, and be one people as you have spoken, if you will hearken to us, and consent to be like us, to circumcise every male belonging to you, as we are circumcised. And if you will not hearken unto us, to have every male circumcised, as we are circumcised, as we have commanded, then we will come to you and take our daughter from you and go away. And Shechem and his father Kamar heard the words of the sons of Yaakov, and the thing pleased them exceedingly, and Shechem and his father Kamar has hastened to do the wishes of the sons of Yaakov, for Shechem was very fond of Dinah, and his soul was riveted to her. And Shechem and his father Kamar hastened to the gate of the city, and they assembled all the men of their city, and spoken to them the words of the sons of Yaakov, saying, We came to these men, the sons of Yaakov, and we spoke unto them concerning their daughters, and these men will consent to do according to our wishes, and behold, our land is of great extent for them, and they will dwell in it and trade in it, and we shall be one people. We will take their daughters, and their daughters we will give unto them for women. But only on this condition will these men consent to do this thing, that every male amongst us be circumcised, as they are circumcised, as their Elohim commanded them. And when we shall have done according to their instructions to be circumcised, then will they dwell amongst us, together with their cattle and possessions, and we shall be as one people with them. And when all the men of the city heard the words of Shechem and his father, 
Hamar, then all the men of the city were agreeable to this proposal, and they obeyed to be circumcised, for Shechem and his father Hamar were greatly esteemed by them, being the princes of the land. And on the next day, Shechem and Hamar, his father, rose up early in the morning, and they assembled all the men of their city into the middle of the city, and they called for the sons of Yaakov, who circumcised every male belonging to them on that day and the next. And they circumcised Shechem and Hamar, his father, and the five brothers of Shechem. And then everyone rose up and went home, for this thing was from Yahuwah against the city of Shechem, and from Yahuwah was Shimon's counsel in this manner, in order that Yahuwah might deliver the city of Shechem into the hands of Yaakov's two sons. And the number of all the males that were circumcised were 645 men and 246 children, but Kithikim, son of Parad, the father of Kamar, and his six brothers would not listen to Shechem and his father Kamar, and they would not be circumcised, for the proposal of the sons of Yaakov was loathsome in their sight, and their anger was greatly roused at this, that the people of the city had not hearkened to them. And in the evening of the second day, they found eight small children who had not been circumcised, for their mothers had concealed them from Shechem and his father Kamar, and from the men of the city. And Shechem and his father Kamar sent to have them brought before them to be circumcised, when Kevikim and his six brothers sprang at them with their swords and sought to slay them. And they sought to slay also Shechem and his father Kamar, and they sought to slay Dinah with them on account of this matter. And they said unto them, What is this thing that you have done? Are there no women amongst the daughters of your brethren, the Kenianim, that you wish to take unto yourselves, daughters of the Evrim, whom you know not before, and will do this act which your fathers never commanded you? Do you imagine that you will succeed through this act which you have done? And what will you answer in this affair to your brethren and Kenianim, who will come tomorrow and ask you concerning this thing? And if your act shall not appear just and good in their sight, what will you do for your lives and me for your lives in your not having hearkened to their voices? And if the inhabitants of the land and all your brethren, the children of Chem, shall hear of your act, saying, On account of an every woman did Shechem and Kamar his father and all the inhabitants of their city do that which they had been unacquainted and which their ancestors never commanded them, were then will you fly or where conceal your shame? all your days before the brethren, the inhabitants of the land of Kenyan. Now, therefore, we cannot bear up against this thing which you have done. Neither can we be burdened with this yoke upon us, which your ancestors did not command us. Behold, tomorrow we will go and assemble all our brethren, the Kenyani brethren who dwell in the land, and we will all come and smite you and all those who trust in you, that there shall not be a remnant left from you or them. And when Hamar and his son Shechem and all the people of the city heard the words of Kidagim and his brothers, they were terribly afraid of the lives of their words, and they repented of what they had done. And Shechem and his father Hamar answered their father Kidikim and his brethren, and they said to him, all the words which you spoke unto us are true. Now do not say, nor imagine in your hearts that on account of love of the Evrim, we did this thing that our ancestors did not command us, but because we saw that it was not their intention and desire to accede to our wishes concerning their daughter as to our taking her except on this condition. So we hearkened to their voices and did this act which you saw in order to obtain our desire from them. And when we shall have obtained our requests from them, we will 
then return to them and do unto them that which you say unto us. We beseech you then to wait and tarry until our flesh shall be healed and we again become strong and we will then go together against them and do unto them that which is in your hearts and in ours. And Dinah, the daughter of Yaakov, heard all these words which Kididim and his brothers had spoken, and what Hamar and his son Shechem and the people of the city had answered them. And she hastened and sent one of her maidens that her father had sent to take care of her in the house of Shechem to Yaakov, her father, and to her brethren, saying, Thus did Kediem and his brothers advise concerning you, and thus did Chamar and Shechem, and the people of the city answered them. And when Yaakov heard these words, he was filled with wrath, and he was indignant at them, and his anger was kindled against them. And Shimon and Levi swore and said, as Yahuwah lives, the Elohim of the whole earth, by this time tomorrow, there shall not be a remnant left in the whole city. And twenty young men had concealed themselves who were not circumcised. And these young men fought against Shimon and Levi, and Shimon and Levi killed eighteen of them, and two fled from them and escaped to some lime pits that were in the city and shimon and levi sought for them but could not find them and shimon and levi continued to go about in the city and they killed all the people of the city at the edge of the sword and they left none remaining and there was a great consternation in the midst of the city and the cry of the people of the city ascended to heaven and all the women and children cried aloud and shimon and levi slew all the city and they left not a male remaining in the whole city and they slew Kamar and Shechem, his son, at the edge of the sword, and they brought away Dinah from the house of Shechem, and they went from there. And the sons of Yaakov went and returned, and came upon the slain and the spoiled all the property which was in the city and the field. And while they were taking the spoil, three hundred men stood up and threw dust at them and struck them with stones when Shimon turned to them, and he slew them with all the with the edge of the sword and shimon turned before Le levi and came into the city and they took away their sheep and their oxen and their cattle and also the remainder of the women and the little ones and they led all these away and they opened a gate and went out and came unto their father yaakov with vigor and when Yaakov saw all that they had done in the city and saw the spoil that they took from them, Yaakov was very angry at them. And Yaakov said unto them, What is this you have done to me? Behold, I obtain rest among the Kenieni, inhabitants of the land, and none of them meddled with me. And now you have done to make me obnoxious in the inhabitants of the land amongst the Kenianum and the Perizim, and I am but a small number, and they will all assemble against me and slay me when they hear of your works with their brethren. And I and my household will be destroyed. And Simon and Levi and all of the brothers with them answered their father, Yaakov, and said to them, Behold, we live in the land, and shall, and shall Shechem do this to our sister? Why are you silent at all that Shechem has done? And shall he deal with our sister as with a harlot in the streets? And the number of women whom Shimon and Levi took captive from the city of Shechem, whom they did not slay, was eighty-five who had not known man. And amongst them was a young damsel of beautiful appearance and well-favored, whose name was Bena and Shimon took her for a woman, and the number of males which they took captive and did not slay was forty-seven men, and the rest they slew. And all the young men and women that Shimon and Levi had taken captive from the city of Shechem were servants to sons of Yaakov and to the children after them, until the day the sons of Yaakov going forth from the land of Mitzrayim. 
And when Shimon and Levi had gone forth from the city, the two young men that were left, who had concealed themselves in the city and did not die amongst the people of the city, rose up. And these young men went into the city and walked about in it and found the city desolate without man and only women weeping. And these young men cried out and said, Behold, this is the evil which the sons of Yaakov the Avri did to this city in their having this day destroyed one of Kenyani's cities and were not afraid of their lives of all the land of Kenyan. And these men left the city and went into the city of Taknach, and they came there. And behold, the inhabitants of Taknach, all that had fallen that all that had befallen them, and all the sons of Yaakov had done to the city of Shechem. And the information reached Yashuf, king of Tapnach, and he sent men to the city of Shechem to see those young men, for the king did not believe them in this account, saying, How could two men lay waste such a large town as Shechem? And the messengers of Yaakov came back and told him, saying, We came into the city, and it's destroyed. There is not a man there, only weeping women, neither is any flock or cattle there. For all that was in the city, the sons of Yaakov took away. And Yeshuv wondered at this, saying, How could two men do this thing to destroy so large a city and not one man able to stand against them? For the like has not been from the days of Nimrod, and not even from the remotest time has the like taken place. Yashuv, king of Tapak, Tapnak said to his people, Be courageous, and we will go and fight against these Evrim, and do unto them as they did to the city, and we will avenge the cause of the people of the city. And Yashu, king of Tapnach, counseled with his counselors about this matter, and his advisor said to him, Alone you will not prevail over the Evrim, for they must be powerful to do this work to a whole city. If two of them laid waste the whole city, and no one stood against them, surely, if you will go against them, they will all rise against us and destroy us likewise. But if you will send to all the kings that surround us and let them come together, then we will go with them and fight against the sons of Yaakov. Then will you prevail against them. And Yashuv heard the words of his counselors, and their words pleased him, and his people and he did so and yashu king of tapnach sent to all the kings of eberim that surrounded shechem and tapnach saying go up with me and assist me and we will smite yaako the every and all his sons and destroy them from the earth for thus did he do to the city of shechem and do you not know of it and all the kings of the emerim heard the evil that the sons of Yaakov had done to the city of Shechem, and they were greatly astonished at them. And the seven kings of the Emerim assembled with all their armies, about 10,000 men with drawn swords, and they came to fight against the sons of Yaakov. And Yaakov heard that the kings of Emerim had assembled to fight against his sons, and Yaakov was greatly afraid, and it distressed him. And Yaakov exclaimed, Exclaimed against Shimon and Levi, saying, What is this act that you did? Why have you injured me to bring against me all the children of Kenyan to destroy me and my household? For I was at rest, even I and my household, and you have done this thing to me, and provoked the inhabitants of the land against me by your proceedings. And Yehuda answered his father, saying, was it for not my brothers Shimon and Levi killed all the inhabitants of Shechem? Surely it was because Shechem had humbled our sister and transgressed the command of our Elohim to Noach and his children. For Shechem took our sister away by force and broken wedlock with her. And Shechem did all this evil and not one of the inhabitants of the city interfered with him to say, why will you do this? Surely, for this my brother went and smote the city, and Yahuwah delivered it into the hands 
into their hands because its inhabitants had transgressed the commandments of Elohim. Is it then for naught that they have done all this? And now, why are you afraid or distressed? And why are you displeased at my brothers? And why is your anger kindled against them? Surely our Elohim who delivered into their hands the city of Shechem and its people, he will also deliver into our hands all the Kenyani kings who are coming against us. And we will do unto them as my brothers did to Shechem. Now be tranquil about them and cast away your fear, but trust in Yahuwah Eloheinu and pray unto him to assist us and deliver us and deliver our enemies into our hands. And Yahuwah called to one of his father's servants, Go now and see where those kings who are coming against us are situated with their armies. And the servant went and looked far off and went up opposite Mount Kihon and saw all the camps of the king standing in the fields and he returned to Yehuda and said behold the kings are situated in the field with all their camps a people exceedingly numerous like unto the sand upon the seashore and Yehuda said to Shimon and Levi and unto all his brothers strengthen yourselves and be sons of valor for Yahuwah Eloheinu is with us. Do not fear him. Stand forth each man, gird with his weapon of war, his bow, his sword, and we will go and fight against these uncircumcised men. Yahuwah is our Elohim. He will save us. And they rose up, and each girt on his weapon of war, great and small. Eleven sons of Yaakov and all the servants of Yaakov with him and all the servants of Yitzchak who were with Yitzchak in Hebron all came to them equipped in all sorts of war instruments and the sons of Yaakov and their servants being one hundred and twelve men went towards these kings and Yaakov also went with them and the sons of Yaakov sent unto their father Yitzchak, the son of Abram, to Hebron, the same is Herat Arba, saying, Pray, we beseech you for us unto Yahuwah Eloheinu to protect us from the hands of Kenanim, who are coming against us, and to deliver them into our hands. And Yitzchak, the son of Abraham, prayed unto Yahuwah for his sons, and he said, O Yahuwah Elohim, you did promise my father, saying, I will multiply your seeds as the stars of heaven. And you did also promise me and establish you your word. Now that the kings of Kenyan are coming together to make war with my children because they committed no violence. Now, therefore, O Yahuwah Elohim, the Elohim of the whole earth, pervert, I pray you, counsel of these kings that they may not fight against my sons and impress the hearts of these kings and their people with the terror of my sons and bring down their pride that they may turn away from my sons and with your strong hand and outstretched arm deliver my sons and their servants from them for power and might are in your hands to do all this and the sons of Yaakov and their servants went towards these kings and they trusted in Yahuwah Elohim. And while they were going, Yaakov their father also prayed unto Yahuwah and said, O Yahuwah Elohim, powerful and exalted Elohim, who has reigned from the days of old, from thence till now and forever. You are he who stirs up wars and causes them to cease. In your hand are power and might to exalt and to bring down. O oh, may my prayer be acceptable before you that you may turn to me with your miracles, mercies, to impress the hearts of these kings and their people with the terror of my sons and terrify them in their camps. And with your great kindness, deliver all those that trust in you, for it is you who can bring people under us and reduce nations under our power.